Hello everyone, Dr. Mandel here with you. I hope you're having a pleasant day or night regardless of where you are. Today's topic is how to sleep well with arthritis in the neck, spondylosis, degenerative joint disease, osteoarthritis. <clears throat> well, everyone has this to some degree. And as we get older, we get more of it. That's just the way life is. So if we can choose something which is the right way to sleep, because we need sleep, one third of our life is sleep, and if we don't sleep correctly, we don't heal, we don't heal, we suffer in pain, and our immune system becomes diminished. So what I'm gonna teach you today is some proper positions on how to sleep, particularly those people who have neck conditions. This is not only degeneration, arthritis, which everyone will eventually have, much more certain people, that more than others, depending upon forward head posture, accidents, injuries, poor posture, things you've been doing over the years. So we'll get into this real quick, but even those people with herniated discs. Now realize in America, uh, we have over 10 or 11 million people with significant problems of degenerative problems of the neck. And that's on the low side. But what they found in the studies is that these people have more insomnia problems or more difficulty getting to sleep than those who don't have inflammation because inflammation causes pain and pain causes distress and distress leads to problems trying to get to sleep. So let's get right to it. I think you'll like this. I'll move through it pretty quick uh, as we move up the ladder right here. Uh, here is a military neck. Most people who are my subscribers, as well as maybe new subscribers, you'll notice that you have a military neck to the left, a straightening of the curve versus a normal cervical curve. So you see that, and obviously when you have a curve uh, that's cervically normal like this, that normal curve, the head is being stabilized upon the joints of the back. When this curve gets straighter, that weight of the head being 12 pounds, 12 pounds starts putting pressure on those discs, causing the disc to degenerate. Now, when we go in the opposite direction, like looking down, texting, <clears throat> get more stress. Uh, you can look at my videos, and obviously for every 10 uh, degrees we go forward, every inch we go forward is 10 pounds of stress. So you could just imagine the amount of stress and force. Now, if you spend a lot of your time looking down like this, texting all day, working down below, you're going to have degeneration. I promise you. And, and unfortunately, degeneration is silent until it becomes inflamed later. Uh, if you look here, this is degeneration. Spur of a bone, narrowing of the disc. When you narrow the disc, the space where the nerve comes out becomes smaller. As it becomes smaller, now we put our neck into a certain position and it becomes more painful, okay? So that is a disadvantage of spinal degeneration is that you have more inflammation of a nerve. Uh, we can look here, look to the right. We have severe joint disc degeneration, my patient right there, and to the left you see a normal curve. You can see how the curve becomes straightened, and once it becomes straightened, then the head of the weight starts to compress like an accordion. Okay, so you have the top of the neck, you have the lower part of the neck, and in the center of the neck, generally C4, C5, C5, C6, you'll find most degeneration of the disc, and as that disc degenerates, the disc becomes weaker, more susceptible to bulging disc and herniated disc. Very, very common. We find many, 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 many herniated discs with degenerative joint disease, degenerative disc disease. All right, so let's move up to the old text neck. <clears throat> if you look there to the right, uh, you can see this is a 44-year-old female. Uh, and as you see 12 years later to the right, look at the arthritis in there. Look at the spur in there as a result of text neck. You actually got a reversal of the curve. A lot of arthritis, okay, uh, because of poor posture. So we look here. Let's go into some, some little facts about sleeping. Here is a pillow. Obviously, this is a cervical pillow. The big question here is what pillow is good for my neck? Well, there is not one pillow. That's what we're going to learn by the time we finish this up. And I'll move quickly. But the most important thing is her neck must be in line with her spine. Her chin must be in line with her sternum, right in the middle of her sternum. Okay, if you look here, this is kind of a neat pillow. If you lay in the middle, it supports the neck. If you lay on the side, that's if you're on your back. If you lay on your side, it supports your neck where it keeps your spine straight. So this is a different kind of pillow. And I am not pushing these pillows. I just want to give you some ideas about what's out there. Um, 
if you look at this, look at the correct way that he's sleeping the incorrect way. Look go ahead and look at that. You can see when he's on his side, pillow between the knees, trying to keep his head level, chin again in the center of his chest. On your back, you want to support the neck, a good support pillow. There are many, many out there, and preferably the knees slightly bent, takes pressure off the lower back area. Here's a picture here on the side, pillow too high. Look how the curve in the neck is too high, bending upwards too low. Look how the head is going low. Look how the spine's falling. Look down on the bottom, and you can see that it is perfectly level. That is the correct way to sleep. Good neck or bad neck, that is the correct way to sleep. Okay, let's move here. Just to give you another idea, and I'm throwing this at you in different ways so you can, this will sink in. Level the left, high in the middle, low on the right. The angle changes. Now, why am I showing you that? Because, well, this is what we don't want to do. Now, when you sleep on your stomach, you have to turn your head off to one side, compressing the neck. The IVF spaces where the nerves come out of right here becomes inflamed and irritated, closes up. And the reason why when we when we lean our head, let's say this is the back of me right here. Let's say this is the right and left. Let's say that we have narrowing on that right side. If our right side is down like this, it becomes more narrow. So with this kind of situation, it's better to open up the right side. So by opening up the right side, you're going to wait, you're going, you're going to find a position where the right side is going to be more open. So depending upon certain situations, depending upon your disc herniation, compression, where it's compressed, that's why it's important to know your body that if you have an irritation on one side and you lean into it, it's usually going to close the nerve and irritate it more. But if you lean away from it, it will usually open up more. So therefore you may be on a slight elevation when you sleep, a slight elevation to open up that IVF space, depending upon your situation. Now, sleep on your back compresses the organs. Um, if you're going to sleep on your back, I like to put a pillow underneath the pelvic area, helping taking that curve uh, out of that, that sway back, taking some of it out. And if you're going to be on your stomach, a low pillow. You cannot be in a high pillow because you're going to extend your head back and it's going to cause more pain, particularly with arthritis, spondylosis. The pillow here, I like this pillow. I have one of these pillows right here, very inexpensive. Um, uh, the, what I like about them is that I can mold it up and I can fit it right in between my neck and my shoulder. You want it wide enough to where it keeps that head straight. Very important. Uh, this is a pretty good pillow, uh, very inexpensive, and it's pretty heavy, pretty full. Now, some people like feather pillows. And if you're going to get some people like to squeeze the feather pillows and kind of push it in the neck when they're on their side, it's okay. That's good. No problem. You have to find what works for you. Now, I always tell you to go ahead and buy a pillow where you can return it uh, if you don't like it. But remember that the main point with neck arthritis pain, it should be the pillow needs to be wide enough to support the distance between your shoulders and your neck. You should be able to shape and reshape the pillow if you have to because everyone has different you know, necks and shoulders. That's where I like the feather pillows. And for size sleepers, the pillow should be tall enough to fill in the space. In other words, it needs to be tall enough to fill in the space between the mattress and your ear. Right here is an ISO cool. This is a foam pillow. Some people like foam pillows. All right. Here is a, another cervical pillow, high density memory foam. And <clears throat> you can spend $15 to $200 on a pillow. Let me tell you something. My pillows believe it or not, are not expensive. You need to find something that works for you. I don't think that you need to buy expensive pillows. Now, another very important thing is using a towel. Some people like using towels, not a pillow. The towel is good. Why is that good? I'm going to show you in just a second. Let's go back up here. Here's another cervical pillow. And here is obviously when you sleep on your back, you need to be careful because sleeping on your back will obstruct your airway where the tongue and the, the tongue can fall back and uh, uh, an obstructing airway and making you sleep, giving you apnea. Let's go up here. Mattresses, very important. If you have an old mattress, invest in a decent mattress, please. If you don't have good support on your mattress, you can see you could have a perfect pillow, but look how the pelvic doesn't contour. If it's too saggy, 
no good support that can cause back pain if it's too firm. It should kind of be a decent firmness, not too soft, obviously, but definitely not hard. You want something where your spine is going to stay in line because if the pelvic drops, it's going to eventually cause compensatory changes to the neck as well. Everything works together. Just don't look at your neck as your neck. Look at your whole spine as your spine. All right. Sleeping position here. Correct sleep position. You can see in the lower left. Why am I mentioning that? Lower right, still good. Back is good. Support in the spine, the normal lordosis. The upper ones are abnormal. You can look at that. Now, why am I saying that? Let's look here. Because that cervical pillow works hand in hand with that lower left right here. Okay, you can see there. And then you can see here. This is what I want to show you here. Look at the upper one. The upper one is normal. And the lower one is not normal. So the advantage of a cervical pillow or using a rolled up towel will help sustain that normal cervical curve. And over time, uh, you may use it. You may notice the muscles are sore doing it. So use it a little bit at a time so your muscles can get adjusted to it. Now, let's talk about some miscellaneous important things right here. The old cervical massage pillow. I like these things. Why? Not to sleep on. Before you go to bed, it's good to stimulate the muscles. Someone wants to massage you, it's okay. You can massage the muscles yourself, but this vibrates, increases blood supply to those people who may have tense muscles. And you can use this five, 10 minutes, stimulate the muscles. Uh, I think it's good. It may help you give you a sound sleep. I like the ice pack. Uh, you can put, I like it underneath the skull. You can use it 10, 15 minutes, reduces inflammation, takes away headaches. Uh, most of the time when you have arthritic changes, you're going to have inflammation, but chronic inflammation is good with heat as well. And I'll tell you in just a second. So if we look at this next picture, oops, I put the wrong one in there. Okay. Anyways, you're going to take the ice pack, put it underneath the skull, not on top of the head, underneath the skull. Okay. Obviously when you get inflamed under back here, when these muscles contract, they pull underneath the skull and you have nerves that go over the head behind the eyes. And that can cause a lot of your headaches, a lot of your head pain. Uh, it can cause actually tinnitus, ringing in the ears, uh, vertigo. Those nerves can play a lot of games. Uh, those nerves in the back of the neck can play a lot of games, even the TMJ. All right. I did mention about the heating pad. I like heating pads. You can use moist teeny pads, 20, 30 minutes, 15, 20, 25 minutes. Don't sleep with them, please. You don't want to burn yourself. People mention, well, what about a cervical collar? Um, guess what? If it helps you sleep, use it. There is no problem supporting the neck because this will kind of keep your head from sagging sometimes. And some people like to sleep with this. I don't have a problem with this, but I do have a problem if you're walking around with it every day because the muscles are going to get weaker. But if you're sleeping with it, I don't have any problem with it. Okay, because whatever works for you is great. Uh, I love chamomile tea before you go to bed. And uh, that chamomile tea will relax the smooth muscles. The, it will relax the skeletal muscles, makes you feel nice and calm. Uh, and I actually love valerian root tea, one of my favorites. Now, if you want a good night's sleep, this may be one of the best tips I gave you all night. Uh, they come in valerian root capsules, approximately 500 milligrams, 400, 500, 550. Um, this will relax you. Good for anxiety, too. Um, we don't want to use a computer too late at night and go to bed, and then we, it, it stimulates our brain a little too much. Uh, let me go back here and get out of here. Um, <clears throat> we uh, also want to uh, avoid large meals, anything heavy, or fattening. Uh, I like to use the fruits before you go to bed if you, if you got that little crave for something. Be careful with the smoking, uh, no good. Drinking, no good. Uh, Keeping your room temperature nice and cool is great. No coffee, no chocolates. Uh, just use good common sense. Well, I hope this has given you some good common sense. I really hope that you will share this video. I think a lot of people out there will definitely benefit from this. This is a very common condition. I really hope it helps you. Check out my, my videos on my channel, Great Self-Help Videos, Cutting Edge Nutrition. Check me out on Facebook, Motivational Doc. What's really most important is just stay healthy, stay proactive, uh, make it a great day or night regardless of where you are. I'll head to the chat room and um, we'll be back with you real soon. Bye-bye now.